Okay, this is James from the PlayStation blog, and I'm here with Greg, who's a producer on Infamous 2. Um, so the last time I spoke about Infamous 2 was at Gamescom. So what's new since then? Uh, so there's been a lot new with Infamous 2 since Gamescom. Um, we did a cover story with the official PlayStation magazine in America and other magazines in Europe, uh, kind of talking a little bit of the backstory. People have been asking a lot of questions, kind of reveal some of the bits going on, some of the supporting cast of the game. And right now, today, uh, here at the PlayStation Experience, we're starting to talk about the morality, how your morality choices affect your gameplay decisions. Uh, and the biggest thing here is it's much more kind of in-the-moment choices, whereas your, your decisions will make huge, uh, well, dramatic changes in how you play the game. Um, case in point, the mission we're showing here, uh, you're saving Quo, a kind of support, uh, one of your, the people helping you out in Numeray, trying to get ready for your showdown with the Beast and uh, she is captured and so you're you've got kind of two options to kind of go save her you can listen to your buddy Zeke and decide okay I'm gonna go free these police officers who have been captured kinda get some goodwill from the citizens and go storm go storm the mansion where she's held or you can listen to Nyx uh, a new character we're introducing another super powered character that kind of is more the the devil to Zeke's angel in this case and she suggests you get a trolley full of nitroglycerin and, and ram it into the place and thus kind of leave it kind of a scar on the world leave it to where you know, this place has kind of been blown a little bit up by the fact that you just rammed a trolley full of nitroglycerin into it, and then you go and finish the mission that way. So there's lots of moments like that where you're going to be left with a choice that's going to change how you play the whole mission going into it. There'll be more on-the-spot decisions for sure in Infamous 2, uh, but, I mean, people, people play how they play. I think the important part for Infamous 2 for us is to make sure that no matter which way you start playing, you can always decide you can go from, you know, being selfish to the, the most righteous person around or the other way around and just, like, screw it, I'm just going to start beating people up at random or, you know, start doing these more selfish things. How it affects Cole, we're not really talking about just yet. We're really talking just more gameplay decisions, but the gameplay decisions are pretty distinct. I mean, you will have whole sections, if not whole missions, completely change depending on whether you decide on a good or evil choice or a, you know, a selfless or selfish choice. Uh, we've seen, um, forgive me if I don't know the, the actual term, we've seen the sort of uh, electrified crowbar. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, what was the uh, decision behind giving Cole a weapon this time? Uh, so the decision to give Cole the amp, this kind of electrified uh, weapon he uses to channel his powers, uh, really stems from the fact that people really wanted to play the game with melee. Uh, people, a lot of people in the first game really commented they like to just go in there and beat people up. And we wanted to make it a lot more satisfying experience. You get in there, much more satisfying to hit people with a weapon. You got these really cool finishers, like my personal favorite, where he grabs them around the neck with the fork, swings them around like a bolo, and slams them to the ground, kind of dissipating energy outward. But there's a whole variety of them, and it just makes melee feel a lot more satisfying and intimate. How many more moves, super superpowers, can you expect over the original? Uh, you can expect a lot more superpowered moves. I'm not saying the exact amount, but uh, there are quite a few. Uh, I'm moving on from that, a lot has been made of the. Um, it looks a lot different, I think, Infamous 2 from the original. Is that a, a conscious design change, or is it just like an evolution of the engine? Um, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. I would say it's the 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 game looks a lot better in most people's eyes, I would say, because of the evolution of the engine. I mean, Sucker Punch went in there, you know, left no stone unturned. It's been the philosophy for development all along. So part of that extended the technology and just doing everything they can to pump all that technology up to the next level. Um, the game looks also different because it's set in a new city. It's set in New Marais, more of a New Orleans-inspired city, uh, which gives a very different vibe than Empire. So you get a, var a variety of different looks, from swamps to slums to a kind of flooded out city to all these different places that you wouldn't have seen before. Uh, in Empire, you just wouldn't have gotten it because Empire is more kind of a concrete jungle, more like industrial city. This is a little bit more spread out and diverse, so that alone is also adding to the difference in the look of the game. Uh, finally, for those people who um, who played a lot of Infamous, you know, myself included, what's what's going to be the most surprising thing about Infamous 2? So, what would be the most surprising thing about Infamous 2? I'm going to say the beginning of the game, and I will leave it at that. Okay. Thank you for your time, Greg. I'll catch you later. Cool.